The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 28th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day here with a mixed bag, whether we're looking at the sectors inside the S&P 500 or the U.S. indices. You got the Dow trained at 158 points. The S&P is flat. The Nasdaq is up 35. The Russell's up about two little about three points so it's basically flat the semi is up 84 one and six tenths percent move to the upside train is up 85 you've got gold up 21 bucks silver's up a buck 47 uh light speed crude is off 54 cents natural gas is basically flat 30 treasury down 13 ticks printed out at 116.18 our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is nvidia it's up 54 bucks printed out 1118 today we'll complete a td9 count top whatever today's top is or the hot td9 count whatever today's high is if price begins trade above that or close above that tomorrow, talks about a very strong upward momentum move for its daily time frame. Otherwise, we should begin to see NVIDIA pull back. HubSpot is up 56 bucks. That's nearly a 10% move. Decker's Outdoor, 35 bucks, 3%. Insmed, 25 bucks, 113 percent there. I hope everybody's got a ton of that stock. And Asmill Holdings, that's up 16 bucks, nearly a one and seven tenths percent. To the downside, it's a micro strategy leading to. Cause off 35 points, 2 percent. O'Reilly Automotive, 16 bucks, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Moderna, 15 bucks, 10 percent there. Celsius Holdings off about 15 bucks or 15 percent. And Thermo Fisher Scientific, 13.50, uh, about oh, nearly 2 and a half percent to the downside. So let's begin our day by doing what? <clears throat> well, one chart certainly to pay attention to is going to be this one. Now, this is the uh, spot volatility at the bottom portion of the chart, S&P 500 at the top portion of the chart. Now, you, it, it, identifying tops is probably one of the hardest things to do. Bottoms much easier. Uh, when we take a look at patterns out there, it's, they're, they're more reliable. When it comes to the tops, not so much out here. Now, this chart here is using the tool brought to us by Garo, parabolic SAR tool out there, created by Wells Wilder. And what I've identified for you, this is here trying to identify tops. You see, what does happen, you've got the spot ball ticks, the 50-day exponential moving average. That's on the bottom portion of the screen, currently printed at 1386 out there. So we know that's a key area. But when we get a change in that parabolic SAR, 
out there. The dot will go ahead and move to the uh, downside out there, and that would suggest we would then have, it, whether it's to the downside or the upside, in this case here we're trying to identify a potential top. Uh, when we get that, then that would signal we could be seeing a top. Now, the last time that we had that out there, that was on the trading day of May the 14th, and the very next day it just flipped back to the other side, so that most certainly didn't work. If we go to the one prior to that, this is this is with, now in this case here, you have that change in dot back on April the uh, Fool's Day, April the 1st out there. The very next day you had price above that 50-day exponential moving average we know that when price is above that price is likely the S&P that is, is likely to move sideways to lower out there that most certainly work that time if we go back to that uh, uh, prior change on February 13th out there that most certainly didn't identify a, a top uh, nor did it on the uh, trading day well it was a two-day three-day top that actually took place on January 29th when we had that signal out there it was basically a two-day top on January 16th and it was basically a, a two-day top as well on December the 20th. Nonetheless, it's worth watching, but do recognize prices below that 50-day expense moving average. And I would say that would more likely happen is a close, a spot fixed close above 1293 would add to the idea that price should at least target 1386. So that might set up a nice uh, short-term or intraday chart, uh, a trade uh, for uh, some of you guys inside the, uh, well, listening to, you know, the show. So that's something to be paying attention to today. What else should we be paying attention to today? Let's we'll just go take a look at you got the uh, Dow, which is the weak indice out here right now. Let's go check in on it. We'll do that a couple different ways. We'll take a look at the bigger picture. Now, when I say the bigger picture, I'm really only referring to the daily time frame charts. This way I can give you some price targets based upon its current patterns. So on the upper left-hand side, we start with the Dow equity future contract. It's trading below profile support. It's trading below last uh, Friday's low out there. Its next area of support is a 38,584, 30, that is the likely price target for the Dow Equity Future contract. If we take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial, same pattern out there. Of course, it doesn't have profiles, but its price target would be its breakout area, and that's at 38,518. The Diamonds, same pattern, no profile, trading below last Friday's low out there. Its next area of support is 38,506, that is its TD9 count breakout level. The equal weighted Dow. And by the way, all of these have TD9 count tops. I should have had a mark. I thought I had a mark, but clearly I didn't have a mark. So all of these have TD9 count topping patterns out there. In the case of the equal weighted Dow, its price target will be 3317. So that's its message to you and I. If we go take a look at the equity future contracts, kind of my shorter term time frame charts, let's see what they're signaling to you and I. The five hour time frame. It's got a rose momentum indicator signal, needs a bullish reversal candle to identify a bottom. The same thing with the 240, the same thing with the 120, the same thing with the 60. However, the 60-minute chart is going to go ahead, very likely going to go ahead. We'd have to see a very large rally, so I don't think that's a likely outcome. So this will go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom at 12 noon. Now, at this stage here, the low on the session was the last hour that low out there is at 38,973 and if we do get a bullish reversal candle at uh, at 12 noon right now we've got a, a bullish engulfing a candle out here then you'd have a road momentum indicator bottom as well so that's a 60 minute chart i keep my eye on it with regard to the 30 minute time frame chart i don't see any kind of a bottoming signal was there an a to b equals cd pattern that's the question i've got well if there is I'm not going to go there at this stage here. I do have a wave number seven uh, count to the downside. So I've got wave seven or wave number three, one or the other. But we can see on the 15 and the 10 minute, they do have road momentum indicator signals out there. So I'd say I'd watch the 60 minute chart out there. If at 12 noon, and we'll try to come back to this before we uh, close out the show, this would suggest that we at least see a counter trend move up to about the 39081 ish area out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, folks, let's stick with the uh, taking a look at the uh, daily time frame for the uh, equity futures, the cash indices, the index ETFs, and equal weight uh, should one exist. So this is the NQ out here. Now, in the case of the NQ, there is a topping pattern. It is on the equal weighted ETF. That equal weighted ETF uh, formed a bearish engulfing candle. It did it about the one to two A to B equals CD. But what price is doing right now, it's uh, found support. It's the second time it's tested this level, and that is its oscillator and change line. Before that, you've got 121.81. That would be the bottom of its profile. And if price were to close below that, we'd be looking at 119.22. Uh, with regard to the other three, that's the NQ, the NDX100, and the QQQ ETF, there is no topping pattern in play. They did not uh, generate that same candle session out there. We are in bar number eight out here for those three instruments, but we are not at a high. So it needs to be a poke above the high from uh, three days ago out there uh, to occur between today and uh, Tuesday and Thursday out there. If that were to unfold, then the NQ and its uh, counterparts could generate a TD9 count top. So we have to just simply keep coming back for that. Short of that, it suggests that price wants to move higher. Why? Because we're above profile and we're above a green asset and change line. Those are bullish conditions out there. But let's just uh, you know recognize and pay attention to the signal coming from the QQEW, which also, though, at this stage here, has held support. So nothing has broken down. Let's move from the NQs. Let's move over to the ES or the S&P 500 left-hand side there. So in the, this case here, we have TD9 count tops across the board, whether it's the S&P cash index, whether it's the ES mini, whether it's the SPIs or the equal-weighted RSP. Now here, if we take a look at the ES mini, 
The Yes Mini has pulled back, tested and rejected its green oxygen change line. I would say as long as price is able to hold that 5312-ish area, it suggests that price should rally up towards 5349. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. And 5349 and a quarter is actually the um, uh, sell the D point. That was that bear sash candle that formed out there. So close above that, and that would suggest that we move higher. But right now, the setup inside of the daily time frame is suggestive of a move up towards those highs. If we take a look at the SPY, it's really the same type of setup out there. It's trading above the center of its profile. It's trading above its green asset and change line. Odds would favor a move towards the 531.82-ish area out there. And the RSP, it's trading below profile. Uh, so it's not incongruent with regard to uh, at least the ES Mini and the uh, SPY out there. Let's now uh, finish this off by taking a look at what's going on inside of the Russell 2000. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, I don't have a equal weighted ETF for it. If we take a look at the daily time frame for the cash index out there, uh, I don't know why I've got the profile and I need to turn that off, but I'll, I'll do that later. Uh, it's a found resistance at that uh, green oscillator and change line. So it's traded below it. It's been below it for a couple of days. 207.990 is the number. If uh, we can see the uh, cash index close above that level, begin trading above that level, that would suggest that we rally further. We've got the same setup inside the Russell 2000 equity future contract, although here price is traded with inside its profile. Its oscillator and change line is sitting at 2085 and change. Let's call it 2086. A close above 2086 should take us into the sell zone. It's a sell zone because it's got a bear structured profile. The bear structured profile is between 2100 and 2116. And finally, we take a look at the IWM. The IWM today was testing the top of that bear structured profile. And that's at the price point of 20689. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, it does not have a confirmed top for the daily cash index for the equity future contract, but it does for the IWM. On the IWM, it generated that bear separating candle out there, and that identified a sell the D point pattern. That found support at the bottom of its profile. Today, it was trying to test the uh, top of that profile, and again, that number is 20689. If price closes above that, uh, then we should see that uh, sell the D point, that bear separating resistance level, get tested out there. So that's what's going across the board out there with regard to those four. There's one more that we really need to take a look at. So let's go do that right now. Let's knock this out, and that is a semiconductor index. The semiconductor index, if it closes the day, let me just update this just a tad. If it closes the day above its TD9 count high and it completed that pattern on Friday, that high, by the way, is 52.5564. So if it negates that signal in day number one, that suggests a strong upward momentum move and that we should continue to rally. However, and I'm sorry, there happens to be a however here. The however is we are in wave number seven. That is letter G. That requires a lower high to confirm that pattern. So even though we'd be in escape velocity, the upside, if in fact the market were to end like this right now because the SOX is negating, it's TD9 count top, by the way. Last week at its close, just by a smidgen, it negated its TD9 count top. And on Friday, it closed above 52.1783, would negate the monthly uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top that is in place out there. So still you've got a wave number, potential wave number seven. It's going to be interesting to navigate these charts. But right now as we speak, the semis are suggesting to you and I, that's irrespective of wave number seven, that still needs at least at a minimum a lower high out there that the semi should continue to rally. And if that's the case, we likely are not at a top in the market out here. So that's what's going on there. So what else do we want to look at? Well, I've got two requests that are in. So let's go take a look at uh, those. Slow day, holiday. Hopefully everybody had a, a great uh, Memorial Day a weekend out there. Nice to get a, just an extra day of uh, rest out there. So hopefully everybody was able to do the same. But the first request out here is to take a look at Oprah. I didn't even know that Oprah had a uh, stock chart out here. But O-P-R-A is the uh, ticker symbol, and it is uh, – Opera Limited. So we take a look at Opera Limited. What do we know about it? Well, maybe it's setting up an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. And this is for Snowball. So today, price is taken on a swing point Snowball from the trading day of May 15th. That swing point generated volume of 538,000 shares. Today, so far, we're up with 433,000 shares. So it is taking that swing point out with volume. What I will do, just to give you the exact number on Oprah, I'm just simply going to 
to go on my other screen. We'll stay here on the white screens so that I don't, don't screw that up. But I will give you the one-to-one -one price project. I'll give you the one-to-one -one and more out there. So the one-to-one -one momentarily, just give me a second. The one-to-one -one is going to get us up to 1508. I would say that that's a pretty likely outcome. Now, I actually am going to go ahead and switch over to my other charts out there just simply because of what popped up on the screen. So I'd like to be able to show you versus go ahead and try to draw that in on my white background screen. So hopefully I remember to go back. And that's on the daily time frame. And I'll open this up here with regard to Opera Limited. So here what we can see is the A to B equals CD pattern. One-to-one -one price projection would be at 1508. We also see a nice descending trend line. So Snowball, what I'd like you to do is put that on your charts as well, that trend line, because price probably extends itself or gets up towards that level. The one 1.272A to B equals CD pattern is up at 1561. The 1 1.618 is up at 1629. You can see we're on the left side of that C to D leg, so it's more explosive, more powerful, more energy than an A to B leg. So odds would favor doing more than the 1 to 1A to B equals CD. But you still have that longer term trend line. So I'd be watching that. As far as the weekly chart is concerned, when we come back, we'll just take a look at oh, oh get back to this one. The gold report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Uh, folks, so we're still taking a look at uh, Oprah out here. So we've given the A to B equals CD pattern for the daily time frame at a trend line resistance level. We look at the weekly time frame chart. What we see out here is a consolidation with inside its profile. Snowball has support down at 1256, resistance up at 1663. On a monthly time frame, price is trading up in towards resistance. It's above its green oscillator and change on, so that's a bullish signal. But your levels are resistance, so your real battle out here, and the real battle is at 1722. So that is a bullish structured week monthly profile. Price closed below that bullish structured monthly profile for several months. All we're looking for is a two consecutive month confirmation, and we got that. We can see that price then just ra that rallied a couple months ago. Where did it find resistance? At the center of that profile. That told us that was nothing more than a counter trend move. If price can overcome, and that means close above the bottom of that profile, the bottom of that profile is 1495, then what you should see with regard to Snowball is another run for 1722. If price can ever take that out, then you've got a real move up towards the 2404 level. So that's what I see when I take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame. Snowball help, that helps you out, and best of luck to you on that trade. Mark wants to take a look at CELH out there, or Mark uh, uh, if we take a look at this, this is, whoa, what a day this is having. So this had formed a wave number seven top. That is letter G. And that took place that was actually confirmed on the trading day of May 23rd. Remember, when we take a look at the SOX index out there, I was saying that today could easily be, as very likely to be, a negation of that TD9 count top. And that was right in the background was wave number seven. So here's an example of a wave number seven pattern that most definitely took hold. And we should watch that, of course, uh, over the coming days inside the semis out here. Now, what Price is doing, it's testing profile support out here, Mark. And that's down at the price level of 79.10. If price closes the day below 79.10, odds favor price move back to where it broke out from, and that is 70.16. So right now, I would say that is the likely outcome. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart ran into resistance out here at a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The resistance level out there was up at 99.62. That was the high of the Three River Evening Star candle formation. This week, we might even form another Three River Evening Star candle formation. What does this tell us? This tells us with certainty that you and I know where sellers are at and the areas that they are defending. And that area that they're defending is basically from 99.62 on the way down out there. Price is trading with inside his profile. We're trading below the oscillator and change line. This suggests a move to 74.96. So you got 74.96. If price closes below 74.96, that's what's going to get you back to 70.16, back to that daily time frame chart. Finally, when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, last month, the month of April, that confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price, though, is above profile and it's above its green oscillator and change line. So I would say the monthly time frame chart is really more of a neutral signal. It ain't neutral when we take a look at the daily. It's not neutral when we take a look at the weekly out there. And with regard to neutral, that neutral remains in place unless price were to close below the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is currently printed at 68.51. So overall, I'd say that what CELH is doing is headed back to 74.96 and below that, 70.16 would be that price target. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the request. Uh, Greg uh, wrote in, and he'd like to take a look at uh, the uh, wheat, the uh, June or July wheat contract out here. So let me open up this. It says, uh, when you look at CW wheat, I'm tra oh, you're trading the ETF WAT. Um, so we really need to first see uh, what are the holdings, what are the constituents inside WAT. So I do have the July contract up here, but let's just see. I'm going to type this on a different screen. Uh, holdings within 
W E A T. Of course, I'm doing this somewhat because uh, it's a very slow day. I don't have any requests other than this is the last one that I've got that I see, uh, which is from uh, Greg. So we'll take a little bit of extra time to try to identify that. So W E A T. I've got the ETF top holding. So this has here. Let me just put this over on the screen so we can all take a look at it. So unlike I was just simply going to go to the uh, July future contract, where well, we can see here that the July future contract is not even a part of WEAT. That's as of 528. That would be basically be today. So what we've got out here is you've got the September contract that represents 35%. You've got the December uh, of 2020, so September 2024, December 2024 is 30%, and then 35% of it is December of 2025. So those are the charts that we really need to take a look at in order to be able to identify what WEAT is doing to us. Looking at this uh, July contract is basically irrelevant, so we won't do that. Let's simply go over and take a look at it. Let's pop up the September contract first out here, September of 2024. And you said you took some profits on your platform. It was a TD9 count. And then he's referring to the WEAT ETF out there. And that's fine. You'd like to add back. But what we want to do is understand what are the messages, and specifically, right, yeah, what are the messages of these different contracts? As an example, in the case of the September contract for its weekly time frame, prices rallied right up into a breakdown resistance level of 7340. When you get to a breakdown resistance level or any resistance level, what's going on in a shorter term time frame? Well, as we take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart out here, what do we have? What do we have? We do not have a top just yet. You've got a Rogeman indicator signal. And should that September contract form a bearish reversal candle, you would then have a Rogeman indicator top. The monthly time frame chart, luckily we do have enough data here to see a, a TD9 count bottom, Rogeman indicator bottom. And that says that your resistance area is up at 746.75. So you're at 720 right now. Is it worth and you up at resistance on the weekly time frame chart? I think if since you've already taken some profits on this, the September chart is saying, well, don't get ready to jump back in just yet because really I might be topping because I'm up at resistance levels. But let's see what the December contract is telling us. Remember, September is 34.9, of the weighting inside there. Uh, December is only 30%. Let's see if this has any different messages. It certainly is going to have different areas of support. And it does have a different RMS, uh, area. The, the December contract actually topped out here. This, <coughs> this did form a dark cloud cover candle on the trading day of May 22nd. That confirmed a Roachman to indicator top. But see how the green oscillator and change line is held this support? That is a bullish signal. So overall, it's neutral. So how this gets bullish is you need to see December wheat close above 755.75. The weekly time frame chart confirmed a TD9 count top last week. So that says be careful. You need to at least see the daily time frames top fail. It's not failed just yet. And if it doesn't fail, you see price trading below 736.54. We're headed lower out there. And the target on the daily time frame, that uh, the weekly time frame will be 660. And on December, the cup price ran right in resistance. That is the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Greg, we come back in this break. We'll take a look at December of 2025 for weeks. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So now we've got the December 2025 wheat contract up here. I don't know if I have enough data really on the uh, weekly and the uh, monthly timeframes to rely upon its messages. However, there is a TD9 count top that does show up on the uh, weekly time frame. But you've got on the daily, you've got a Roach Mentum Indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profile. So there, you're looking at 70, 744 support. And resistance is really going to be the uh, uh, Roads Mentum Indicator top. That's the high from May 22nd, and that is at 761 and a quarter. Price needs to close above that to negate that pattern and suggest that we move higher. So I'd wait for some type of retracement out there, but be paying attention to those three contracts. Those are the three that you need to watch and observe out there. If I take a look at wheat itself, it negated its TD9 count topping pattern. It did that on the trading day of May the 21st out there. Price is trading above its profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. Um, it does have a Roads Mentum Indicator top that formed out here on May 22nd. That was a key reversal bar. Pre oh, I take that back. It was not a key reversal bar at all. I take that back. So no top is uh, what we see inside of WEAT for its daily time frame. Last week was a TD9 count top on the uh, weekly time frame and that would suggest that price will pull back to 573 quite frankly i think like that everything that i give you on weat out there is pretty much hogwash you got to really be paying attention to the uh, futures contract and this one makes it more complicated because it's split between three and almost equally they're all about 33 percent give or take out there but that's what you really need to do in order to be paying attention to what's going on inside of this etf weat so i do hope greg that the information i provided you is uh, helpful and will provide you with enough information to make a uh, good trading decision so best of luck to you uh there uh mr z inside the tiger's den wanted to take a look at silver specifically was interested in the daily or the weekly time frame we're going to pop really it's multi set of charts up here but let's take a look at daily and weekly let's start with weekly what do we have here the question is do i see anything uh in place right now that would suggest that we extend this rally to the 3275 level out there and the answer on the weekly time frame chart, John, is although I have a Roads Mentum indicator signal, it has not generated the bearish reversal candle. And therefore, what pr and price is above the top of its profile, and price is above its green oscillator and change line, and price took out a TD9 count breakdown level 
that was at the 39.75 level. So the weekly time frame chart is absolutely bullish out here, and that is suggesting that we move higher. I don't have any other. Now, if we got a bearish reversal candle, different story, but that's not what we're looking at. In fact, if anything, right now we've got a bull sash candle, but it's only day one of the four-day week out here. You didn't ask about the monthly time frame, but since I have it open, this is a continuous contract. I'm going to pop it up on my screen. And the monthly time frame chart shows that a close above last month's high, which was a bearish shooting star candle, 3019, negates its, um, uh, its uh, sell the D point top. However, and this is the however, you are running into Rhodesman indicator resistance from February of 2021 out at the 3276 level. Now, that's a continuous contract. I can't say for certain. If the uh, uh, if the uh, contract at that stage was up at that level, so you'd want to take a look at the highs from back on February of 2021, and the price takes out that high, which I show as 32.76, that would negate that signal. Quite frankly, that would set up a new longer term A to B equals C D pattern with a different price projection. Now to the daily time frame chart. The daily time frame chart just says hold your horses. What horses? The horses that show a Rhodesman to indicator top. Now, if price closes above the candles that it engulfed, well, that would just be one candle. That is May 21st. And that high is 32.72. So what I would say here, John, you're asking about 32.75. I would say um, price is trading inside of its uh, swing point out here for May 20th out there. Um, so, you know, you're trading inside that. It's a daily time frame. You know, when you close inside a candle like that, odds favor, testing that high. That's your 32.75. You're trading above profile resistance. You're trading above its green oscillator and change line. But you are trading into the area where sellers have uh, defended their position out there. But everything here is suggesting that the, what we should see inside of silver is a move to that 32.75. It would really be the intraday charts that would suggest otherwise if we can find reasons. So what would be those reasons? Well, one could be a TD9 account top on the five-hour chart. However, this candle is going to complete at 2 p.m. And right now, the TD9 count is being negated. And a close above that high, which is at 32.09, suggests that silver moves higher. So no topping pattern there other than just a prior swing point high. No topping pattern on the four-hour time frame chart. Oh, let me open this up just a tad more. So price made its way to 32.44, and that was the breakdown resistance area, and that is where on a 240-minute time frame you've got resistance. So if price can close above that, well, it's got a TD9 count top, and that's at your 32.75 as well. So we know that where the sellers are lined up, absolutely. But the buyers right now continue to still show their strength. That's obvious with the 5.7% move on a daily time frame out here. Uh, do I see anything else that tells us uh, you know, you've got resistance on the two-hour time frame chart. Where is that at? 32.44. That number has come to fruition before. Uh, we are potentially generating a seventh wave move top here on a, a two-hour time frame chart. So you might want to watch that time frame. The 60-minute has a roach momentum indicator top. But that is going to go ahead. That's a shooting star. That should get tackled as on an hourly basis. Prices above profile resistance and it's oscillator and change line. So I'm just going to come back and summarize and say I don't have anything out here really of any significance to suggest that price won't get up and at least test that uh, 3275 area. And then, of course, if price takes that out, we're likely headed higher. You would say headed higher to where? Steve would answer that question. Well, the 11A to B equals CD pattern is at 3403. That is for the July contract. Let me show you what that pattern looks like. We'll switch back to our black background screens out here. And then we'll actually just open up the um, the July silver contract. Here you can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Now in this instance here, we can see that that retracement was a 51% retracement. Usually when you do less than a 0.618, you do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern. Usually when price is along the left-hand side of that C to D leg, you usually do more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. Nonetheless, the 1 to 1 price projection, 3403, the 1 to 1 1.272, 3615 out there. And that's what I see when we take a look at silver. So, John, I hope that helped answer your questions with regard to hi-ho silver. Let me check, see if there's any other requests that have come in. And if not... There is. Nicholas wrote in. Nicholas says, uh, OKTA, OKTA.
out here. So let's go get those charts up on our screen. We'll move away from silver. I'll make sure I'm on the right screen because, quite frankly, I don't know if I actually changed back or not. Did I? I did not. Okay, so let me uh, let me do that here. I knew I knew I would forget to do that. Change windows. Okay, so now we should be back on the. We should be, but we're not. Let me uh, do that one more time. The hocus pocus, dominocus. And there we go. The white background screens. Now we want to take a look at OKTA, not Oprah. OKTA. It's going to take a moment here for this to populate. And we'll have this set up here. We come back from the break. So we will take an OKTA for Nicholas. Just wants me to go over it. So we'll definitely do that. Right now, testing support. It's Bullish Structure Daily Profile 9726. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, get back to what we're supposed to look at, OKTA. This is for Nicholas out there. So, Nicholas, you just asked me to do just a general overview. What I see here is I see price uh, consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that's a bullish structure profile that uh, the buy zone is between 97.26 and 98.06 and resists up at 102.59. I don't see any kind of a pattern out here. But if price were to close below uh, 97.26 today, that would signal a potential move back to its recent swing point low from April. 25th and that's be anywhere from the range of 9067 to 9340 the weekly chart out here looks bullish it looks bullish well it's bullish because price above the top of its profile 
It has lost its momentum. Price is trading below its green oscillator and changed on at 100.46. On a monthly time frame chart, um, you know, did this form a sell the D point pattern for its monthly time frame? Let's answer that question out here for Nichols. And the answer is it did. So here you've got an actual top inside the monthly time frame. And a price could be pulling back over time towards a 76.59 area out there. Obviously, that doesn't come into play unless you see a close beginning below 97.26. So that's what I would be watching out there. And that's what I see when I take a look at ticker symbol OKTA. GTE wrote in and would like to take a look at Tesla. The question is, will this move lower into options exploration? Well, if it's going to move lower, what price first has to do is get below the first area of resistance. It's old support that has turned into resistance. I'm sorry, it's old resistance that has turned into support. And that's at 174.84. That is the top of the daily profile. Right now, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. And that's at the price point of 176.58. As long as price remains above that, that suggests that Tesla should actually rally, not head lower. If it gets back inside the profile, then sure, you can easily see it move back to 168.84 or 162.83. The weekly time frame is consolidating with inside its profile, so it's not offering us a ton of message there. The monthly time frame found support to its bullet structure profile. I'd watch the daily, and right now the daily is saying that's as of 11.56 and Tesla wants to rally. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Tomorrow, I'll be recording the show live between 8 and 9 a.m. So please wake up with me early. Have your tea and crumpets ready. And uh, we'll take a look at what all the futures contracts are doing, what they're saying. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.